and how that played into the trauma recovery is there were days where I just had to do simple things I already knew how to do. Like, you know, I already knew how to do the dishes. Like, you know, when you're fighting depression, you never really want to do dishes anyway. But <laughs> like, I already knew how to do the dishes and go for a drive and get coffee and just simple little things that didn't require I had to engage in something new or I had to follow a step-by-step -step process or follow a tutorial or something. But there were days when I just had to wake up and maybe I got my dishes done and that was it. Like that was really all I could do. And so what I did the rest of the day was what I Hey, hi, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so it is a stellar sunny day here in the Pacific Northwest and I am up here at sunrise on Mount Rainier National Park and I am headed into the studio, which means I'm heading onto the trail and I'm gonna do a little bit of painting. But first, let's get some coffee out of the way, shall we? Cheers. All right, let's get on the trail. Let's go. Okay, so while we're out here today, I want to talk to you about three ways that creating art has helped me in my trauma recovery. Uh, but first, real quick, let's do a little backstory for those of you who are new. Uh, two years ago, August 3rd of 2020, I was in a horrific car accident. I was in a tow truck. I was actually riding in the vehicle being towed legally in the state of Washington. My best friend was in the cab and our tow truck driver decided to do a U-turn and pulled out in front of an oncoming semi doing about 50, 60 miles an hour. I suffered a concussion, a compression fracture in my spine and a six inch laceration across the top of my head. Physically, I'm pretty well recovered, but mentally, emotionally, PTSD, trauma, like anxiety and such, yeah, I'm still on the road to recovery. So that's why we are gonna talk about the three ways that art has helped me recover from that. Uh, number one, it helped me to stop having expectations of creating something specific and realistic. I've been doing art my whole life. And so I've always tried to do realistic and specific things. But working with watercolor especially taught me to stop having realistic expectations of what I'm creating. And so I had to learn to, to just let my mind accept what I made. And how that's helped me in my trauma recovery, I had to learn to stop expecting myself to be a specific way and to act in a rational and realistic way. I mean, the goal is for mental health and a key characteristic is you are acting rational and you do have specific ways of responding but i was reacting the ptsd and the trauma it just caused me to react and so i had to stop expecting myself to respond in specific and rational ways Okay, so I've been hoofing it uphill a little bit. So I'm gonna pull over and take a little bit of a break on a nice little rock. Nice little rock. And uh, tell you point number two. The second way that creating art has helped me to recover from my trauma is I had to learn how to check out mentally. I, I don't mean like I went mindless and just disassociated. I just let my mind check out of engagement and check into autopilot and sometimes that meant i just did lines across the canvas or dots or 
I just swatched colors. I had to do these simple things that I already knew how to do or that didn't require a lot of engagement. And how that played into the trauma recovery is there were days where I just had to do simple things I already knew how to do. Like, you know, I already knew how to do the dishes. Like, you know, when you're fighting depression, you never really want to do dishes anyway. But <laughs> like, I already knew how to do the dishes and go for a drive and get coffee and just simple little things that didn't require. I had to engage in something new or I had to follow a step-by-step -step process or follow a tutorial or something. But there were days when I just had to wake up and maybe I got my dishes done and that was it. Like that was really all I could do. I learned that the best way to counter my anxiety and my depression was to get the necessary things done out of the way first. Like get my shower done, get the dishes done. But that's what I mean is like, I just had to do the simple things I already knew how to do. And so applying that to creating art and then taking, doing that in, in artwork and applying it to my everyday life has helped me make progress with the PTSD and the trauma and such. And to the point now where I can let the dishes go by, ugh, I can let the dishes go by for a day or so and it doesn't, doesn't get my anxiety going as much as it used to. And, and, and I might be able to engage in a new thing all of a sudden, like spontaneously, like, like, I don't know, go to a new coffee stand I've never been to and you know, things like that. So there's, there's tip number two. Let's get going and, um, and then I'll tell you tip number three. Okay, so I found a pretty sweet view of Rainier. So I'm gonna stop here so you can look at that gorgeous 10 while I <laughs> give you that third way that I have discovered that creating art has helped me to recover from my trauma. And that is by letting the medium do whatever it wanted to do. I mean, especially if you're working with watercolor. Watercolor does whatever it wants to do. It's gonna bleed how it wants to bleed, it's gonna blend how it wants to blend, and it's gonna go where it wants to go. And how that played out into my trauma recovery was I had to let my day and my days and the seasons and the struggles play out how they were gonna play out, like do whatever they were they were gonna do. There are ways you can have control. Like if I found things that were like my PTSD triggers, like there's a bump in a road in a certain town that, <laughs> that I frequent all the time and I've learned where that rut is and I've learned to avoid it. Like that, those are things you can do. Like those are things you can have control over, but overall, like things are just gonna happen. And there would be some days where, you know, you can't predict what's gonna happen in a day. And, and you don't see your triggers coming, but there's a trigger and then you have a PTSD episode and you're, you know, you're done. You're done for the rest of the day. That's it. Like you're not, <laughs> you're not gonna get much else done if anything. There'd be seasons where I just had to learn to have love and grace for myself, but overall, like things are just gonna happen and you've just gotta let it do whatever it's gonna do. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, so those are my three things, but I got a bonus one for you. I do, I have a bonus way that creating art, creating content, has helped me in my trauma recovery or will help me in my trauma recovery. So we're gonna change locations and uh, stay tuned. So I will see you in the new location, wherever that's gonna be. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are at my campsite. You can see it around me. And I thought this was the most appropriate place to give you bonus point number four. But before I do that, let me give you a little bit of a disclaimer. This is something I have learned in creating art, like while creating art, the last year of creating. But how this is playing out in my life right now in a major way is only just now starting to unfold. I've seen little bits of it here and there throughout the last year, but it is ready to unfold in a major, major way. Yeah. Bonus point number four, take advantage of the opportunities while you can. This is what creating art has taught me the last year. When you've got a moment to create something, do it. Even if it's sketching and doodling on a random piece of mail 
and you don't have your proper art supplies. It's just a standard pin that you'd use to write a phone number down with. Take advantage of your opportunities while you have them to create something, anything whatsoever. And how that has played out in my life right now and how it's going to play out here in about four weeks is it has, it has shown me that the opportunities to heal and recover, I can only recognize them in the moment and go, I'm taking advantage of this while I can. Again, just like the anxiety attacks and the PTSD and such, you can't anticipate when those are gonna happen so you can prepare for them. The same way with your opportunities for recovery and healing, you can't anticipate when they're gonna happen. Sometimes they just happen and you've gotta have your eyes up, your ears open and grab that opportunity while you've got it. So that's how it's played out so far, but how it's gonna play out here in about four weeks is I'm gonna be taking all of my camping gear and I'm going on a massive road trip. I am taking advantage of an opportunity while I've got it to go do a multinational park road trip. And that opportunity to do that would not have been provided to me if it wasn't for the accident to begin with. I'm only able to do this road trip because of the settlement money that has come out of the accident. It was the tow truck driver's insurance that you know, took care of everything. So I'm able to do this road trip because of that. And so there was an opportunity for my recovery, for my healing, and I'm taking advantage of it. So I am gonna start by heading for Glacier National Park and then Yellowstone and then Grand Canyon and then coming back west to Yosemite, Redwoods, and then home to Washington where I'm at. So I am, I'm hitting the road with my truck, <laughs> with my rooftop tent, and all of my camping gear, and I'm gonna be gone. That is, that's just something I am, like, I'm so excited about. I can't even begin to really put it into words. Truly, truly cannot. So I hope that helped you out. I hope you're able to take these three points, these four points, and apply them to your recovery and help you help you get through whatever has traumatized you in life and left you feeling like you need to recover. So till the next video, because this next video is gonna be about how I'm preparing for this road trip and all the things I'm doing to to get myself get myself ready. Okay, I'm not excited or anything. I'll see you all in the next video.